PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers. It is the best place to have your PCB manufactured. This is where I've done most of my projects and some of the things that I currently have in the market that I sell to end users. So if you're ever in doubt into flashing services, assembly services, or just a PCB manufacturing part, definitely check them out. Their links are down below. So welcome back to part three of the cinematic budget build. Now, what we're going to be covering today is we're going to cover its overall flight performance, its tune, also some of the mods that I'm going to be doing and some of the ones that I had to do and also the link to the playlist of this quadcopter is going to be linked down below. Part one was the build, part two was the, the beta flight setup and part three is the flight and the overall tune. Part four is going to be the bid tune and I'll explain why as we go along. So first of all, let's start with some of the things that I want to modify or just change and some of the things that I had to do. One thing I had to do was since I 3D printed this mount right here, which I'll have linked down below, um, obviously it was in very terrible quality, but I didn't use any supports and it worked out pretty great because I didn't have time for supports. The thing that I really want to change and it's really bothering me and also affecting the way I fly is actually the camera. The camera is, the, the quality is is not great especially at least in the lighting conditions that i've been flying it in i really would like to switch this out to probably a proper mini camera i'm getting a couple fox ears and run cams which i'll be changing out very soon once they arrive here now i've also had to put longer screws here because the top plate came off in a crash uh but i was just just because i didn't have long enough screws to go into the standoffs so i've had to use around seven millimeter uh screws here just to go into this place right here and you could get them anywhere just basically m3 seven millimeter screws i placed those in there and i haven't had that come off now the antenna placement and the video transmitter everything is really great nothing's coming loose the capacitor is very secure right in the middle right there so that was really great out of the box that we've done that basically all i have to do is just change out the camera the fpv camera it's really bothering me and um, I'm, I'm afraid to actually hit gaps and stuff and as you can tell from my flying i'm still quite afraid to break this thing because i want to get enough videos on it before we actually go and bash it and this is why i've built my basher quad which i'll be updating you guys on later on this is a truly budget build a proper budget build that i'm not afraid of wrecking this one is a different story right now now the fpv flight footage or the gopro flight footage that you saw in the beginning of the video was actually stabilized with real steady go however what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at the overall default setup that we did together in beta flight and to see how it actually flies i saw that there is no need to actually modify anything it does need a slight tune but that video would have been basically pointless so i'm just going to show you how it is default setup so if you want to go ahead and pick this up and later on what we're going to do is we're going to ruin the tune and try to tune it uh properly in another video where i'll have more time out flying the other day i didn't have that much time because it was raining on and off and um i want to do a proper video i don't want to do a half-assed video so what we're going to do is just going to cover the overall experience with this so you could make your decision if you wanted to build a setup such as this. Now, I want to mention something about the ESC here. This is by far, I think, one of the best ESCs I've ever used, which is the new Mamba F60 with the uh, heatsink. It is insane. I mean, this thing is a powerhouse and the 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor we added was more than plenty enough, even though they do provide you with a much larger one in the box, which you could use and that's even better. But just to know that I got away with a 470 35 volt right here, is just absolutely awesome so that was really great in that perspective uh this whole stack came out absolutely beautiful and possibly later on i'll be adding a dji air unit into this uh but i'll probably have to use a different frame because it won't fit here we're gonna take a look at some of the footage right now so let me go ahead and bring that up and we'll discuss uh how it flew overall and and see where we need to modify slightly in the future all right so right now we're about to take off just to see how you know, the tune is basically just right out of the box. It's all default right here. So I'm going to start making a turn, see if it wobbles slightly. And there is some wobble. You can kind of see that. And you'll get to see a lot of prop wash. So it's going to need a lot of prop wash. So here are just a couple more tricks. Just kind of see if it'll do anything weird in the air. Here again, I'm trying to fly just straight and to see uh, if it's going to need anything. Now you can't really see this on the FPV footage, and this is do this is you get to see this on the HD footage, and you end up watching it later and see where it needs to be worked on. You could also see from black box log, which we're, which we'll, we'll be doing in part four here. Here I'm just cruising nice and easy, just seeing while these slow turns does it you know jitter, does it wobble, does it do anything weird? It's it's doing pretty good for default. This is actually really great for default. Here you can see the prop wash really bad on that wobble. Here, roll needs a bit of, you can see the little bit of bounce back right there. So it's going to need some work. 
I'll also test pitch right now. Pitch looked okay, but it's really hard to know because I need to do a little bit more because uh, it could be just from the uh, RC sticks, the way I was doing it. I needs a little bit of work, as you can tell, it got misaligned while I was punching out there. So overall, it's, it needs tune. I didn't get to tune it because, you know, it would have been just a slight tune. And I didn't have enough time, as you can tell, the sun was going down here. So I'm going to dedicate a full day where I go out, do the slight tune, and also do a proper tune. Where we actually ruin the complete tune here and play around with this stuff. And I'm also planning on doing, like, you know, default beta flight versus emu flight versus whatever flight I find. And to see how well uh, that's going to hold out. Because I think that'll make for a really interesting video. I really want to see how that goes on this quadcopter. It's going to be kind of like a testing platform. And at the same time, cinematography. So don't expect some really aggressive flying with this. Because I don't want to break it just yet. Because I'm planning on keeping this as the uh, platform to test out all these things here. Uh, but we can kind of get an idea of how well they perform. And it should translate to what you do as well if you build the exact same setup. Now with the GoPro, it does seem like it flies without the GoPro. It seems like it flies better because of the uh, j just the overall extra weight. Uh, but it's really difficult to also say that because looking through the FPV cam, you could, you could barely ever see anything. You could sometimes see prop wash, but you don't see sometimes those, you know, those subtle movements where you're actually not putting any stick input and it's just doing these little wobbles, like little tiny wobbles. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have to, you know, stick an HD camera to know uh, how well your quad is doing in the air. And obviously also the black box log really does help. So let's go back to the bench and take it from there. All right, guys, and that's gonna include it for part three. Part four, again, is going to be the tune. We're also probably gonna play with RPM filtering throughout this series. So there's gonna be a lot of testing with this same quadcopter and uh, hopefully document everything and try to explain everything to the best of my abilities. Now, also, if you're looking into getting real steady, you could use the links down below and use the coupon code MESH and you can get $5 off Real Steady Go. It's a little something that kind of helps if you're looking into getting into that because I'll also be having a lot of tutorials on that upcoming very soon. And again, everything here is linked down below and come join my Instagram where I do behind the scenes updates so you guys could stay updated and also decide what video should be next on my YouTube channel, which I've done earlier this week. And also come join my Patreon where I have tons and tons of giveaways. You can go ahead and check it out and you can see what kind of giveaways I do. I do more than 10 giveaways a month. New Patreons, whoever's new for the month, if I got two or three, then they have their own separate premium giveaway. So it would be between those three. So yeah, something like that. I think I only got like one this month so far. So yeah, you have your probabilities of winning are very, very high. And um, yeah, it's a nice way to give back and you get access to my secret shop and also my open hardware schematic for the flight controllers and everything I've done also. So Come join my Patreon, support the channel. And again, everything here is linked down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.